Hello, my name is Jeff Rolka. I want to thank you for checking out my video. This is how to transpose a melody, a skill that is incredibly beneficial for musicians in general, but particularly useful for vocalists for a number of reasons. I'm going to show you two ways that you can work to transpose melodies. Now it's true, there's a little bit of background knowledge that's required to get it all going, but in the first way I think it's pretty manageable, and in the second way it might take a little bit more background, but ultimately will serve you quite well throughout your musical endeavors. Thank you if you've chosen to subscribe. If you haven't yet, I would encourage you to do so now. There are a variety of ways to support my channel, aside from sub subscribing, which is really awesome. Uh, those are in the description, and I hope you'll find something that works for you. There's also Patreon down there, which you can get MP3s and all of these lesson plans and stuff like that. Sometimes the lesson plans are a bit scant, but there's lots of good information there, and it really does help the channel. Right, so first, intervallic transposition, second, scale-wise transposition. Really, they're almost entirely the same thing, but it's kind of two different ways of thinking about it. I wrote a little song, if you can dignify this as a song. I know you like to transpose. I, and that's really the extent of the tune. The idea here is to take a look at that melody, and let me show it to you. I know you like to transpose. I purposely did not start the melody on the tonic because I want to make a point here, which is that we need to know what key we are in. And now, that's actually more important in the scale-wise transposition. So I'm going to kind of put a pin in that and move on. First, we're going to talk about an intervallic transposition. If you don't already know, that is a G sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A, G sharp, A, G sharp, E. There are a variety of free apps that are available for mobile devices such as phones and tablets, and you can just learn the note names that are there on the piano. In truth, you don't really even have to know the note names if you can figure out what key to press, but generally speaking, if you learn the names of the notes and the names of the keys, then pressing them consistently in the same order at the right time will be easier. In an intervallic transposition, we're going to decide how much lower or higher we wish to go and move each individual note by that many semitones. So, for example, let's say that melody is too high. Let's move it down a whole step. A whole step is two semitones. Now we can figure that out by looking at our piano. Here's the G sharp again. The distance between any two adjacent keys on the piano is a semitone. And this will also be true in your apps. So when you have like a piano app and it shows you the keyboard, it's still going to be a semitone. So the distance between this key and this key, those two pitches, is a semitone. And when we add them together, we get different names of intervals. So this is a semitone. From here to here is one semitone, two semitones, and we call that a whole step. We can go on and on and on from there, naming all the other intervals. But for the purposes of illustration, we're going to move the melody one whole step down. So here's our G sharp. A whole step is two semitones. That then means that our first pitch is going to be there. That is our first pitch of the melody. Now, the melody as I originally played it sounded like this. So I have to start from the G sharp and I go to the F sharp and back to the G sharp. Now, in our transposed melody, our first note is F sharp and I have to go down a whole step for the second note of the melody. So in the old key, I know you. In the new key, I know you. The 
next half of our melody went from G sharp to A. Like to transpose. So we started on A, down a semitone, up a semitone, and then quickly down a semitone and all the way down to that E. So that means we have to count those one, two, three, four semitones. So one semitone down, back up, and then down quickly, and then from the G sharp, one, two, three, four semitones in our original melody. In the new key, like will be the pitch for that. So we go up the semitone to G. To transpose, and we have to count four semitones. One, two, three, four. So now we have like to transpose the old key. Like to transpose the new key. Now in a different video, I went over how to transpose chord changes. There's a link on screen. Those PDFs are still available. Just send an email via my website and I'll send them over to you. But here we've done our melodic transposition via counting intervals, counting semitones to be precise. And if I harmonize it the same way that I did the other one, transposed our melody. The original, I know you like to transpose. That is how we can do an intervallic transposition. It can take some time and it certainly takes practice. With time and with practice we get better and better at it, yet I think that there is a faster way to do this that generally works better when we have to transpose quickly. So for example, if you were on a gig and your voice was really, really rough and it wasn't working out, a quick transposition would help you to just kind of get through the night and then, you know, on a better day you could sing it in the original key or figure out something after the fact, but sometimes we just have to get through the gig. And in those cases, thinking about our melody as a scale, in my opinion, goes faster. The prerequisite here is that we have to know our scales in order to do this. And this is why I started this melody on a note other than the tonic. Because the first thing we have to do is figure out what key we're in. So I'm playing E as a chord, A, and then back to E. Now, that is a fairly typical pop progression, that one, four, one. Thinking in Roman numerals, the tonic chord, or one chord, to the four chord, and back to the one chord. That would mean that E, is our tonic, therefore we're in E major as far as we can tell. And that's the E major scale. G sharp is the third. If you know solfege, you can think of it as me. If you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven as your scale degrees, then you can think of it as three, the third. Then our melody becomes three, three, two, three. Four, four, three, four, three, one. And in my opinion, if we think about it like that, it becomes much easier and faster.
to transpose very, very quickly. Case in point, that any key at all, if we want to do it in A major, third is C sharp, F, third is A, finding our starting pitch is really, really fast, but you have to know your scales. Anyway, it makes it really, really flexible to be able to then say, okay, D flat, just that quickly we can transpose. Now learning to do this by rote or by ear can also be very helpful and certainly solfege will facilitate that. However, having a basic understanding of the notes on the keyboard and understanding the difference between a semitone and a whole tone, perhaps learning your scales so that you can quickly do those transpositions, all of those things go into how we transpose and can make it faster. And speed isn't everything, but it is very, very helpful. And when you're really under pressure to get the song going, to keep the gig moving forward, if you have to do a really quick transposition, having an understanding of scales, having an understanding of chords and how they work with your scales, which is what the PDFs are for, all of that will help facilitate this practice. Now I've already kind of transitioned into why, why we would do these things. And I have three main points for why. First and foremost, if you didn't write the song, it wasn't specifically written for you. Unless you've got a songwriter who's writing a song for you, in which case then you have this understanding that they are writing a song for you. But generally speaking, if you did not write the song, or in other words, if you're doing a cover, then the song was not written for you specifically. Therefore, it was not specifically written for your vocal range and your vocal capabilities. Transposition makes it so that any song can be placed into a range that will be most efficacious for you. In other words, if you want to sing a Jeff Buckley song, but you can't really do those E flats and Fs, then it's possible to shift the key so that it's in an appropriate location. On the other hand, let's say that your voice is much higher than Mr. Buckley's was. You could shift those keys up so that your voice is sitting on the tune with the melody in the same kind of ranges that his was when he originally recorded it. I would in fact argue that that is a more original interpretation than singing it in its original key. Moving it so that the notes of the melody map onto your voice range-wise, the way that they mapped onto his, I think will give you a more authentic sounding performance. So it in some, it's an equalizer in many respects. It makes things so that we are doing it in a way that is, in some cases, more similar to the way it was done originally than if we were to sing it in its original key. Two, it facilitates practice, particularly on those tricky phrases. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that you've got a melody, and it goes, I know in its original key, it's here. I know you. For some of us, that might not yet be possible. Or our technique is still developing and it's really difficult to make that initial skip while singing the lyrics in the original key. By moving that melody out into a more comfortable area, I know you, we can work on our enunciation, we can work on our vowel alignment, I owe you. 
making sure that we're getting consistent response through all the vowels that are there in the melody. And if you didn't catch that, I just took the consonants out. I know you. I owe and we're looking for nice alignment. In other words, those vowels all sound similar, they have similar resonances, and they all connect in a nice legato fashion. And then we can slowly but surely I know you, I know you, I know you. And as our technique of aligning the vowels and singing nice and legato through that phrase gets better and better, we can then move it into the range that requires us to deal with the registration event and singing above the secondo passaggio and focus on that skill as opposed to still worrying about vowel alignment and our enunciation. Truth be told, some vowel modifications will occur as we ascend into that range. However, we can practice that. I by doing that melody with only the vowels. Finally, and this is perhaps more esoteric, it, I am of the opinion that transposition enables artistic freedom. In other words, you might not want to sing this song, I know you, like that. And maybe you don't want to sing it in that tessitura making the compromises that a different mode of expression might involve sonically. I know you. And so perhaps it is more satisfying artistically. I know you. To bring it there where you can have the type of tone quality that you wish and the mode of expression that you're going after in that song and make them come together for your artistic vision. Sometimes moving things from their original key inspires us to look at them differently and that I think can supercharge our own artistic expression and therefore make a cover tune which wasn't written for you and isn't your song in the first place, something that has a uniquely your own understanding and take on it. I hope this helps. My name is Jeff. If you have questions or comments, the comments are open and I look forward to seeing your thoughts on this matter. I do hope this helps. Please take really good care of your voices. Enjoy singing, perhaps enjoy transposition, and hopefully we'll see you again. Bye.